All right, got a 2019 uh, Chevy Silverado 5500 HD. So this truck came from the dealer equipped with the upfitter switch package. It's got controls for PTO, exhaust brake, um, auxiliary one, two, and three, which you can connect to whatever you want. They work right, right? Now I'm gonna connect those to the work lights on the, the bed of my truck. I got two lights on the left side here, two on the right, one in the rear. Um, you know, use those for working at night. Um, so when I bought the truck, the dealer told me that they run all the upfitters switch terminations go to the rear of the frame. I guess they default to the back of the cab. Uh, paid a little bit extra, I guess, so that they run them to the back. Well, the one that, the cable that runs to the back, all it does is control the PTO on and off, um, the throttle advance engine start and stop that's it it doesn't have the wiring for the, for the for the auxiliary switches which will be light switches on my truck so the dealership they had no idea where those wires terminated um, I look online nobody seems to know because these trucks are so new so I thought I'd post a video on you know on how to hook these up where the term where the terminations are and what I found looking online um, had found this website gmupfitter.com and they have this uh, GM Upfitter Integration Technical Bulletin number 148B. And it talks about Upfitter Auxiliary Switches. Um, there's a warning at the bottom. GM Upfitter Integration Technical Bulletins are intended for use by professional technicians, not by a do-it-yourselfer. Well, I don't know where you are in the country, but over here in Southern California, the professional technicians that install beds here, um, you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find one that probably speaks English, I guess. Um, let alone read it and be able to read this technical bulletin. So I don't think it's got to be a professional. I think that you'll be able to handle it yourself. I can handle it myself. So here we go. I give you part numbers for the switch and the terminals that you need to make a connector for it. So you that plugs into here, into this connection. And then according to the bulletin, it comes out on the outside of the firewall right here in this rubber grommet. Um, sort of a grommet thing to have here. So the wiring will come through here. It would have been nice just to have the wiring s sitting right here. You know, Chevrolet International, it would have been really nice. Um, Save a lot of hassle. Okay, so I searched these two part numbers on, on, the, on the internet and I found a company on eBay that makes the connector for you. They have the wires about 14 inches of lead on the, on the connector ready to go for you. Uh, it's this company here, like here's their eBay page, MCA Snow Services, and it cost me $41.99, and these guys did a great job. They put this thing together, got it in the mail, and I got it in just a few days. Um, so here's where it goes. You pull this cover off this panel here, up by the pedals, and let's see if I can figure this out. So this is going to go... in here and lock down and then there you go you have your wires i don't know why chevy and international didn't put this in you know with the truck when you're paying for the upfitter switches i don't know why they couldn't terminate the wiring outside the cab where it should be uh, they even show in the upfitter technical bulletin shows what shows what pins are used in the connector uh, i'll go over this in a second and then it shows here under the hood where the wires come out. Um, if you pop the hood open, there's on this rubber grommet, there's a little spot here you can clip off and run the wires out. So you have them outside. Um, so you can run them down the frame to your lights. Now they have one other um, bit of information here in the bulletin. There's two, there's three fuse panels on the truck. One is under the hood, and then there's one in the cab, one on the left and one on the right of the dash. And the truck comes defaulted so that the up the auxiliary switches on the upfitter bank um, are live anytime, so you don't need the key in there to use them. So you have, you know, lights on, on like my work truck or a snowplow or whatever. You can have the lights on even if the key's not on, but you can change that. If you move the, fu the fuse from uh, terminal eight or from 18 to five, it changes two of the switches over, um, so that the key has to be on. And then you have the option with two other switches, uh, switch four and five, um, to switch those over. So they have to be. Uh, key on which is pretty good for some guys. Um, I'm leaving mine You know set up at, at the default because I don't want to have to have my key in so that I can use the lights. Yeah, here's the other fuse panel 
Here's one on the left. It's under this cover. It's got a little insignia of a fuse on it, so I found it. Uh, I thought I was going to break it taking it off. I mean, this thing was hard to get off. I had to use a screwdriver to pry it off. Uh, popped in there really tight. There's one on the passenger side as well. Um, so, anyways, I'll tell you how you can change that. So I'm going to go ahead and terminate, or put these wires through the grommet outside to the cab, and then I'm going to run the wires to my lights, and uh, we'll get those in a little bit. Yeah, so I'm getting the get rid of the wiring on the lights, and look at that, it's finally cooling down. It's only 101. It's going to be a nice afternoon. Alright, this is the electrical cable I'm going to use. It's got three wires in it, and I've got three switches, so that works out really good. This is the port right here where you're supposed to run the wiring through, according to the upfitter guide or whatever you want to call it there. Yeah, consider that cut. And let's see if the wire goes through easy enough. Hopefully. Well, it's in, but we've hit a wall. There you go. Ah, we got it. We got it. So I'll make the connections here, and then we'll tape it up, and we'll pull it back out to where it belongs. So I was reaching in there, trying to line this up more, and I found this other grommet inside. The main harness goes through this hole, and I need to cut a hole in one of these, cut one of these out, these knockouts, so I can run my wire through that and push it back up into place. I would forget about it, except I do want to make sure I block out the engine sound so I don't have noise and stuff leaking from outside. Okay, so here's the wires coming out. Here are my wires that are going out to the truck body. And here are the switches. So only one, two, and three. I'm just going to hook those three up straight out, and then I'll sort it out underneath uh, for what lights go on what switch. So we got yellow, red, and purple. Good here. I'm going to tape this end up and then we'll slide the cable out and we'll kind of put it where it's going to be for the rest of uh, its life here. And then we'll go outside and reroute the, uh, route the wiring to the back. Okay, so a while back. Back in early July when I put this bed on this truck, I started to wire up my night lights, my work lights. Two on this side, two on this side, and uh, just one in the back. I do need to add another one to the back. The reason I don't have one on this side, which I'd like to, is because the crane's in the way and stuff swings around. So I'm thinking of mounting something back here a little lower. But uh, for now, I'm just going to look at the five that I have. When I did the initial video on this, I bought the adapter plug from, uh, I found on eBay. And then um, I've got it all wired into, this, into the switches that are inside the dash there, the upfitter switches. And I just ran it up through this cable here and tied it off up here into the bed. So now I've just got to figure out how I want to run the wiring. Um, you could tell on here that I'm, you know, I'm not one of those uh, OCD guys that has to have everything perfect. You know, this looks kind of crummy. This is actually the, the power going to the boom control, and it's uh, coming from the boom control for the clutch on my compressor, on my uh, hydraulic pump and my compressor. Um, Converter valve for the hydraulics. But believe it or not, that same wiring has been on this truck since 1998 when I first put this bed together. So um, I guess it's good enough. I mean, I'd like to have the time to take and wrap this stuff all perfect and everything, but um, that's just not me with my ADHD. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run this cable just directly across over here. I'll, I'll tie into these lights here. I might clean this up a little bit. Just, I mean, I guess the lights came with uh, Deutz connectors. And when we hook these up, we actually, you know, we kept with the Deutz, but then, but then we just have a butt connector. So, I don't know, I'll tie that on there. 
And then I just gotta figure out where I wanna switch the power across, if I wanna go under the frame to bring it across, um, or if I just wanna go across the back of the bed. I already have this cable here, which is a power cable going to my electric, uh, my electric reel, you know, my extension cord on my reel that I keep in my welding cabinet. That, that goes all the way around here to the front of the welder. And that's been on there for years without any, without any uh, problems. So I think I'm just gonna run it across there with that. And I'll run it in the vent holes with this. And then I think I'll just drill a hole. I might drill a hole out here to run the wire out, just silicone around it. No matter what, if, if I wanna run it nicely, or somewhat nicely, I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the bed, which I really didn't wanna do. Um, better have wires strewn across the back here, which I don't want. So I think I'm just gonna run it across like I did that, uh, that uh, cable for the electrical reel. So I'll get started on it. Okay, I just got done hooking the lights up on the back of the bed here. Um, so once again, here's the switches inside. This is the upfitter switch kit. So auxiliary one is hooked to my left work light. Auxiliary two is hooked up to the, to the, to the uh, rear one. And auxiliary three is hooked up to the right side. Well, it makes it easy, I can just remember. Right, left, and rear. Okay, let's see how they look. Those two. I think all these lights were uh, from Tractor Supply. They're not the greatest lights, but they're not bad. I mean, they've been on this truck for quite a while. And uh, you, know, they get, you can tell they've flopped up a little bit on the lenses and stuff, but they put out plenty of light. What I like about the LEDs too, you know, uh, years ago when I had first put lights on this truck, you know, they were, you know, took that, the uh, regular like fog light bulb, you know, the, the halogen bulb, and it took so much power, you'd have to leave your truck idling if you were gonna be working, you know, more than a half an hour or something like that with the truck, because they would just kill the battery. These LEDs, I can run these things for a couple of hours and not even think about it. I mean, they hardly use any juice. These things probably take five watts for each light unit instead of 60. But anyways, here's, here's where my cord comes out. It goes inside to the adapter that I bought on eBay. Um, run the cord outside here, down the frame, and zip tied down along the frame rail. Comes up along the back of the bed. To the back here with the hydraulic lines and the electrical lines for the crane. And then they split up to this in my lights. So anyways, this is the video on hooking the lights up to the upfitter switches on my service truck on my 2019 Chevrolet 5500HD. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Um, please share it with a friend if you think you know somebody that uh, would find it interesting. Uh, one more thing too, uh, this is the camera that came with the truck. Uh, it came with a, uh, you know, the backup camera that built into the uh, dash, with the display on the dash. And the only place I could really mount this camera because the way the camera is and the mounting they gave me for it, just this little plastic clip, it really was terrible. If you watch my other video of road testing a vehicle, you could tell it's just a mess. So I was watching another video, uh, it's like Brian's uh, Landscaping or something like that, and he was talking about a company that uh, sells cameras for all the new trucks, and they come with the wiring harness adapters for the certain trucks, because this truck didn't just have a phono connector, a video connector, sound con or power connector. It had like a little four wire, six wire connector, a real specialty one. So I, I found them online and I ordered this camera, and it came with the adapter plugged right into my uh, electrical on the back of the truck. And it's got the infrared lights for nighttime use, works really good at night. And it's a great camera and really durable. And it's something I could mount here. So when I back up to a trailer, I can see right, uh, you know, right where I'm going with the ball. Uh, because you know, with this truck, I can't just look behind me and see where the trailer is. There's a lot of blind spots. And then also, uh, when I'm just backing up in general, it just gives me that safety margin. You know, I can see if somebody's behind me or see if something's behind me. So I'm go backing into something or backing over a piece of steel or whatever rock on the job or something. So anyways, um, thanks for watching my video and just please like and subscribe. Thank you.